Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, this is going to be another fun painting, uh, simplified Diego Rivera painting. So grab your supplies, <clears throat> transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now on my traceable, I went over it with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are going to draw what you see. If you're utilizing the traceable, you do not have to go over it with the black lines. I recommend just jumping right into your painting. And what we're going to do in the background, I'm demonstrating a few different brush strokes to try, but we're using black paint and we're going to be filling in um, most of the background with this black paint. And then we'll um, introduce a few other colors towards the bottom with a little bit of shading. Now, as we go through today's painting, uh, we are going to do two layers on here. I'm using student grade paint, so it's a bit on the transparent side. And that second layer just... Um, gives it a little bit more opaque, a little bit uh, nicer coverage. So if you happen to be using uh, good thick paint and you only need to go through and do one layer, go ahead and do that. You don't have to do the second layer unless you want to. So again, we're using that black paint. We're bringing this right up on top of those traceable lines and basically kind of surrounding the image uh, with this dark color. And then we'll use uh, a few different shades of white and raw sienna at the bottom to kind of blend into it. If you happen to be on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that as this color comes to the edge of the canvas that you wrap it around the sides. Uh, it just looks nice when you hang it on the wall having that color wrap around the edge. Now if you are one of my beginner and first time painters and you realize you're holding your breath right now, take a big inhale, just relax. Um, the process of painting is rather therapeutic and you'll enjoy it. And it's kind of nice just to watch yourself transform this white space. So now I'm grabbing some of that white. I did mix it with the black a little bit over there next to the pile and it kind of makes it a dark gray to fill in the rest of the space. And then we'll be taking some direct color and mixing it directly into this wet background. This will be called wet on wet blending. All right, so our background is full. Now we're going to grab a chunk of white and then literally just kind of slap it on there and then move your brush back and forth. And you'll notice that the more you move your brush, the more that white dissipates and disappears into the background. All right, so when you're done with that, a good place to pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to prep the flowers. So we're making a light yellow, and that is white with a touch of yellow. And we're going to fill in all the flowers um, with this because, like I said, we are doing two layers on here. And even with this application that I'm doing, you can um, see the lines right through it. So that's why it's important to do two layers uh, based on the paint that you might have. And again, I'm just going right over those, filling all that space in. I am trying to apply it a little bit thicker, but you can still see the transparency. And I'm still using that middle flat brush. If you need to, feel free to jump um, to a larger brush or even a smaller brush as you're getting uh, close to some of those little fine tips. Now my background, I believe, is still wet, so you can fully let your background dry before you do this. If you do not, um, just be really kind of cautious as you bring this wet paint next to the black paint. If you happen to get some of the black into your yellow and white mixture, just take a paper towel, wipe it off, and then reapply the appropriate color. All right, doing good. Take another uh, progress photo, and we're just going to keep moving right along as we basically get what we call our underpainting um, done before we do our second layer. So now we're going in for light raw sienna, and that is white with a tiny amount of raw sienna. And if you need to adjust, make it a little darker or lighter after you've applied a little bit, go ahead and adjust your color. And again, there we go. I know I, was, I thought I was going to switch brushes soon. Here we go. Moving down to that pointy brush gives you a little bit more control in some of those tight areas. And no matter what brush you're using, play with the pressure of your brush. Uh, more pressure is going to create a little wider brush stroke. Light pressure creates a little bit of a smaller brush stroke. And just kind of play with it as you're filling up this space. Now we're taking that direct raw sienna and I'm placing it in a few areas and then just kind of blending that into the base paint. Um, 
Again, just kind of observe what you see and you are strengthening your power of observation. You are also more than welcome to reference the original painting of this and change and add anything that you see in the original painting that I may have simplified on mine or have even taken out. There are a few things that I did not add to this painting. So on this one, we actually went with a lighter raw sienna and that was white with a tiny amount. You want it lighter than um, the basket you just painted. And then here we grab that raw sienna, throw it in there for a few shadow areas, and then with that light pressure, blend it into the base. On the second step of, or the second layer of this, I actually put white on there because I wanted a larger change. So with that being said, you're welcome to change any colors as we go along this today. So for the skin tone, um, we are using that raw sienna with a touch of red. Um, it actually kind of makes it a bit of a burnt sienna. So if you have burnt sienna, you can use that or you can use your raw sienna and add red to it. If you feel like doing a different skin tone on your painting, feel free to do that and switch it up to whatever you want. If you have any questions on color mixtures, just leave a comment and I'll reply and let you know what you should use. All right, so fill it up the face, uh, the little feet on the bottom, her arms. And again, I am trying to apply it a little bit thicker, uh, but it will get a second layer. And then there's also like little hands that are holding the basket. There we go, and a head above it, a little hint of a head. All right, you guys are doing good. This is coming along nicely. So now we're gonna go into light blue and that is gonna be white with a tiny amount of blue. And we're gonna fill in, um, I guess kind of we'll call it the, sa the sash or the structure that's holding uh, the basket that the figure is holding. All right, and if you have to mix your uh, color two or three times, don't stress about getting the exact same shade of blue every single time. All right, doing good. So we're gonna clean the brush. We're actually gonna go back to the black paint and we're gonna fill in her dress as well as her hair. And I'm still using that small pointy brush, applying it kind of thick. And as you're applying your um, thin paint kind of thick, you can hold your brush at a 45 degree angle and that helps the application of applying it a little bit thicker. So kind of play with the angle of your brush. Um, and again, just getting more comfortable with your tools, uh, more comfortable with the pressure and just with mixing and uh, applying paint. All right, so we're gonna make a little light green so that it was taking that yellow with a touch of blue uh, to make our green. And if you already have a tube of green and you prefer to use that, go right ahead. Or if you have your yellow and green mixture, you can um, mix that together to make it. So again, adjust for what you need. All right, so take that progress photo. I do recommend letting everything dry. Then we're gonna move into that second coat and basically recreate all those steps. And then we're gonna be adding more details. And even right now, just noticing that second layer of black on there, how much better coverage, how more opaque it is, um, and a little bit more even consistency with the application. So for student grade paint, a few layers is to your benefit. If you do jump up to artist grade paint, um, you may only need one application. And the difference between student grade and artist grade paint, uh, student grade is a little more affordable, uh, less color choices, it is a little more transparent, but it's a great place to start um, if you're just kind of curious about painting. So that way you're not spending a whole lot of money uh, buying supplies before you realize if you like it or not. All right, so here that wet on wet blending, slap some of that raw sienna on there while the black was still on my brush. There we go, I'm throwing a little more in there and then grabbing a touch of white. And then you did see that I wiped my brush off, didn't clean it, but just wiped it off. And then we're gonna use the pressure and the brush stroke direction to just kind of blend all this in. And this is a rather fun part about painting. And notice as I get towards the end, how I make brush strokes the full length of the canvas. And if you want kind of something kind of smooth, you can go back to that 45 degree angle to hold your brush and that alleviates some of the brush stroke marks that show up. If you want to use your finger to blend, go right ahead and do that. All right, looking good. All right, so now we're gonna move back into the green and that's gonna be the light yellow. So I'm gonna start with white and then yellow and then add a touch of blue to make our green. We're gonna go a little bit darker this time. 
And again, if you have a tube of green and you want to use that, go right ahead and use it. All right, and adding a little bit underneath the lilies. This is kind of the, the shadow. We'll add it in a few other places, and then we'll go add a little bit more blue and make a darker green for some of the lines. Um, and again, this is a simplified version of the, um, the original painting, so add extras if you see more in the original painting than I added. So right there, just added a little bit more blue to our mixture. I'm actually going to grab a fresh brush and make a darker green, and if, I need, if you need to, just add more yellow to it. And then we're just kind of putting lines in here, indicating the stems for these flowers. It does not have to be perfect. It's just giving the illusion um, that the stems are moving are uh, moving into the basket. We're going to do the same thing with white or with black. Pardon me. And again, keep that light pressure. So I'm resting my forearm against the edge of the table. You can put your pinky out and kind of steady your hand as you apply the paint. Um, whatever you need to do. If you need to turn the canvas sideways because it's easier to make a line in that direction, go right ahead and do that. All right, so now we're going in with the raw sienna. We're going to get the um, kind of the rim of that basket on there. This is, again, our second layer. And I did switch the color. I went more with the raw sienna because I wanted that a little bit darker so that way it's, um, her shawl stood out from the basket. Now we're going into the black with that pointy brush. And again, treating the brush kind of like a pencil, we're giving this kind of uh, coiled, almost braided effect um, on the basket. Again, you are observing what you see and just mimicking what you see to the best of your ability. Painting gets easier and more comfortable with more practice. All right, so go into that light raw sienna. We're gonna fill in the bottom portion of the basket, and this is where it will look a little more opaque and a little nicer. All right, doing good. Remember to breathe. If your brush is kind of shaky as you're going to apply it, that does mean you're holding your breath. That is not to your benefit. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, that will help with your process. All right, doing good. Moving right along. And feel free to pause the video at any point that you need to. So we're going back to her dress and her hair, putting that second layer of black on there. We will do a little bit of a uh, wet on wet blending highlight at the base of her dress. All right, so applying that thick paint on there and then grab a smidge of white, slap it on there at the bottom, and then again with that light pressure, just play with mixing that into the black. And then going back to the black to uh, put a second layer on her hair. All right, and then grabbing the white direct white and the pointy brush. And here's where I decided to make the shawl a little bit lighter. Um, if you wanna keep with a creamy color or change the color, go right ahead. I wanted it to stand out a little bit more from the basket. And I believe in the original, it was kind of a light cream color. As well in the original, there was something I did not add to the shawl. So I do want you to look that up, see what I left out. And if you wanna add it to your painting, go right ahead and add it. So now we're making a bit of a light gray for some of that shading um, on the shawl. And it's kind of just where her hands and the blue sash and her face kind of all meet to give a little bit of an indication that there's some shadow in there. All right, so another good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're still gonna be using the small pointy brush and we're gonna be going back up to the flowers. We're gonna make a uh, kind of a light green. So I'm starting with the white and then adding the yellow and then add a touch of green. And you may, like I just did right here, apply it and then you realize you need it a little bit darker. So go ahead and do that. So I added a little bit more blue to my mixture. There we go, that's a good shade. And you can add a little more yellow if you need to, but adjust for what you need. And this is gonna be the centers of the, um, the calla lily flowers. And just kind of, again, mimic what you see. I'm just kind of putting little blobs there. If you want to get a little more precise by looking at the original, go right ahead. Um, but we're, again, we're just giving this nice illusion that we have a bundle of flowers up here and we'll be adding two um, in a moment. And we will do a little bit of outlines and we'll put some highlights on here. All right, this is looking good. Really proud of you guys for stepping out of your comfort zone and painting at home. So now we're gonna go back to that skin tone. 
uh, the yellow or the raw sienna with a touch of red. And again, just placing it right on top of uh, all the body part elements in this painting. And then once we get all of those on there, we're going to use a little touch of black to do some shading. Again, just kind of keep building on all the skills that you're learning throughout the painting. And I do love that second layer just because it looks so much better, so much more opaque coverage and just looks more like a finish, finished painting. So here's where we grab in a little bit of that black. Again, we're just going to place it in a few areas. And then if you need to, we'll wipe the brush off and then smush this color into the base color. And keep in mind when you're doing this, a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of dark pigment will go a long way in your mixture. And in your beginning stages of painting, that's what you're getting kind of comfortable with of how much pigment it takes to mix into um, what you've already got. And like I said, your brain's learning a lot, your muscles are learning a lot, and just keep on learning. So here you can see where I switched over to white. Um, Again, placed it where I wanted it, wiped the brush off, and then with a little light pressure, little dots, little dash marks, blending that into the base wet paint. And the more that you paint, the more you're just going to keep getting comfortable with this skill and building on it. All right, great job, guys. This is looking so good. All right, so second layer for the sash. Um, and I did go a little bit lighter blue on this one, so if you end up going lighter or darker or switching the color, um, adjust for what you need. There we go. And then we'll take some direct blue in a moment and do a little bit of shading the same way that we did on the skin tone. Here we go. Just placing that medium blue. Um, you can do medium blue or direct blue. And again, just observe where it got placed. And then now we're going to go into that direct white. And we're going to be putting this kind of on the tops and on the left hand side and then as we get towards the right hand side of the canvas um, they do kind of go towards the right so again just kind of utilize your power of observation of where these go if you end up putting more um, white on these flowers than I do totally okay um, but we're trying to get kind of our three values the white being the lightest uh, the main color that we already put on there as the mid-tone and then the shadow element for the centers of the flower as you do this, I recommend that you prop your painting up, look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away and assess it from that distance. This is the normal viewing distance for artwork and most things in life. As you are applying the white, please notice how every two or three brush strokes, I'm going back and I'm grabbing more white and I'm being rather generous with the amount of white paint. I do want this to be kind of a bolder highlight and uh, with it going on top of a lighter color, you just have to add a little bit more and it's student grade paint. So that's why I'm applying it a little bit thicker. All right, looking good. Take your progress photo. I do recommend letting this fully dry before you move into your black outlines. And we're going to kind of go over what was on the traceable. Um, it was the original was not outlined in the way that we're doing it here. But since I teach first time and beginner painters, this just kind of helps clean up the painting. Um, for my beginners. So as you get more into painting, you won't do as many outlines. So as you're working with this pointy brush, you'll notice sometimes that I put my pinky out, use that as kind of my steady pivot point. You can rest your forearm against the edge of the table. Uh, again, play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure creates a skinnier line. More pressure creates a wider line. And if you think about it as um, kind of like treating your brush like a pencil to where you're just using the, the last two millimeters of the bristles to apply the paint, that will help you create the skinnier lines. But for my beginner painters, if you have varying widths of line in your painting, that's just where you're at for today. Embrace it. You will get better and more comfortable the more that you practice. As we move into the basket, I am doing um, horizontal and then we'll do ver uh, I'm doing vertical right now, then we'll do horizontal lines to kind of give the indication that it's a little basket weave. Does not have to be perfect. Again, just giving the illusion that this is um, a woven basket and our brain is going to fill in the rest of the details. If you are again finding that your brush is shaky as you're going to do this, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas and that will help. Um, 
Again, you're just getting comfortable. And as you move into the flowers, I'm not outlining every single flower, just a few areas to give a little bit of definition. Again, uh, different from what the original looks like. And if you need to turn this canvas sideways or upside down or put it on your lap or uh, whatever you need to do to adjust, if this is extremely frustrating for you or more difficult than you want to deal with, um, you can fully let your painting dry. And on the light areas, you can use a black Sharpie marker uh, to do some of this. I do recommend the brush just because it's good practice. Um, but you also have the option of making it mixed media and you can use a Sharpie marker or even a brush pen. All right, looking good. And we got a few little toe lines in there. If you don't want to add them on yours, uh, you don't have to. Outlining the hand. And some of the places where we outline with that um, black background already, you won't really see the outline. That's okay. It still kind of helps clean up your edges though. All right. Coming along nicely. We have one last thing that we're going to be adding, and that's going to be the um, stamen on each of these flowers. Oh, forgot that top little outline up there. There we go. So now we're going to move into the light yellow, and that is going to be um, actually, you've got a choice. You can either use the direct yellow or a yellow and white mixture or um, a yellow and raw sienna mixture. I'll let that be your call. Um, I think the yellow or the yellow and raw, so raw sienna mixture would be your best option. So that way it's a, it kind of stands out um, from the background and you have a bit higher contrast when it overlaps that black. And each of these, it's going at basically like a little dash mark um, inside each of the flowers. Much more obvious on the original painting compared to what you're looking at here. So again, feel free to reference that original painting by Diego Rivera. All right, guys, I am so proud of you for painting. Please do not wait too long to do your next painting. You just get more comfortable, and it's great practice. So until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting. But please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can and any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing, and until next time, cheers.